Hey, how's it going guys? Thanks for clicking on the video as always. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, so I get a lot of messages uh, asking me my opinion on things. So a few people, well not a few, quite a few have asked me about my opinion on the Grizzly. So uh, I thought, uh, well there's got to be a ton of those videos on YouTube. So I just thought I'd uh, Google search it or YouTube it. And there wasn't a lot. There was just a lot of uh, kind of reviews from you know ATV magazine or dirt tracks or one of them like professionals so this is just going to be an honest owner's opinion of the Yamaha Grizzly uh, this is a 2017 model but they really haven't changed much from uh, from about 2008 that's when they first came out with the uh, 700 uh, Grizzly well 686 cc's and this one here is the the 708 cc motor but uh, they really they haven't changed that much. It's almost uh, it's almost like the Toyota Tacomas. They don't they don't change them much. But uh, so yeah, this is my gonna be my review on it, and uh, hope you guys like it. All right, so this is actually my second Grizzly. I had a 2008 uh, before this, 2017. Uh, 20, 2008 halfway through that's when they first changed over to the 700 Grizzly from the 660 they came out with the 686 cc motor they kept that rate right up until 2016 and in 2016 this 686 was having issues with passing emissions so uh, Yamaha contacted or contracted it out to Subaru to make the 700 motors they came out with the 708 uh, there was a few issues, uh, mostly in 2016, some in 2017, uh, with some, uh, oil burning with the 708 cc's. Mine, uh, mine, I haven't had a moment's issue with it, so, uh, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, I don't have any issues, but, uh, I think some of it, it ha is on the owners, too. You don't, you don't know how they treat their machines, but, uh, yeah, Yamaha contracted it out to Subaru for three years, 2016, 17, 18, and then in 2019, they made some changes to the trusty 686 motor and Yamaha started putting that back in the Grizzly 2019 and above. So I guess, uh, I guess we'll start first just with the looks. I mean, Yamaha has been around forever. Uh, you know, they're known for reliability, build quality. So it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be very well built and uh, great reliability. Uh, I, I love the look of the bike. It's so like I was saying, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of the style, and I think it, uh, it's a sharp looking bike. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, I like just the the metal racks and uh, the big high wheel wells, and uh, I'm not a fan of like the plastic everywhere. So kind of the transformer looking bikes, like a, say a Renegade. I know some of them are pretty cool looking, but uh, fine, they look kind of like a transformer. <laughs> But yeah, I just like functional metal racks. I know the Polaris has a real nice rack system too, where they have storage inside the racks, which is uh, would be a really nice option too. So yeah, in 2016 they added the uh, the center headlight there on the handlebars. It has LED lights here in the front, and then the center one is a halogen. I do kind of wish that one was an LED. You can get replacement bulbs for it to make it LED, but uh, halogen is supposed to be better for long distance. Uh, you know, like a more of a spot. Uh, but yeah, I like the I like the bike as far as the look department goes. It's uh, you know, it still looks like your classic four wheeler. It has a big uh, comfortable seat on it. Easy gauge cluster. Very easy buttons to use as far as you know, like the uh, lights, uh, kill switch, the override for uh, when your diff lock is on and uh, four-wheel drive and then uh, slide this over and then diff lock very easy to use and of course just the uh, I like having shifter over here on the opposite side of your uh, thumb your throttle I guess but yeah I think as far as looks go it's a nice looking machine I had the camo. I actually didn't. Uh, I w didn't want the camo. I wanted the red one, but apparently they sold it when I got there, so they ended up giving me the camo for the same price as the red one, even though it's an an expensive option. Not expensive, but it's an option. But yeah, it's a 
I think she's a decent looking bike, kind of aggressive look to it there. All right, so in the uh, 2017 Grizzly, this one, like I said earlier, has the 708cc motor made by Subaru. Uh, I find it has plenty of power. I mean, I, I, if you guys watch any of my videos, uh, you know I do all trail riding, camping, kind of a little bit of bushcraft stuff mixed in. But uh, I'm not a deep mudder, obviously, judging by my tires and just the setup that I have. it's I'm not a deep mud guy. So as far as like a trail ride bike goes, the 708 708 uh, single cc or even the 686 i find the power is very very close I, I don't know some guys say it has way more power but me personally i think it's just about the same maybe the clutching is a bit different but uh i actually found my friend's uh 2014 grizzly with the 686 easier to wheelie than this one maybe it's just a driver <laughs> But uh, yeah, I do all trail riding and stuff, so I find the 708 or the 686 has plenty of power for trail riding. Pushes these 26-inch uh, tires, no problem at all, and I'm, I'm sure you could go up from there. Uh, and uh, so as far as power goes, I find it's great if, if that's what you want. If you're going to plan on doing maybe deep, deep mud and you want to turn 30 or 32-inch tires without issue, you may not want. You may not want to... A grizzly maybe you'd want something with a little bit more punch a can-am or polaris or something else maybe kawasaki whatever you want but as far as like a trail ride bike goes the smoothness of the motor that paired with the yamaha's ultramatic uh transmission which is th there's no comparison I anybody can i've never even heard anybody try to argue it yamaha has a constant clutch uh it's, it has two kind of like two clutches so your belt drive is always engaged, so uh, there's none of that jerky motion of your clutches going together and grabbing the belt, which makes for jerky. If you guys watch, uh, uh, also I'll say uh, if you guys watch videos of guys on uh, different brand bikes, you know, big power bikes, trying to do trail riding, especially slow technical, I, I find it's very, very jerky. The ones I've driven have been, and uh, this thing here is just smooth as glass. You just feather on the throttle if you want to go slow or fast it just there's none of that jerky feeling at all um, and with that type of uh, belt drive system it really really uh, makes your belt last a long time I've heard of getting over 20,000 kilometers on the same belt uh, mine I'm nowhere near that yet uh, but uh, I know my buddy Adam has uh, he's probably got 16,000 on his Grizzly as the original belt no issues at all so the motor has plenty of power for your trail riding and uh if you want to turn mud tires that are you know 28 inch mud tires it's going to do it no problem at all but you start getting up there in the big big tires you may want to upgrade and get uh, something a, a different bike with some more power so that takes care of the uh the motor and the transmission uh, i guess we'll look at uh look at a few features all right, as far as uh, storage options, uh, obviously you have your racks. Uh, you know, they can hold, uh, I think it's 100 and some pounds on the front and uh, right around 200 pounds on the rear. It has a few storage compartments. Uh, this one here is, as far as I can tell, is uh, waterproof. I've never, I've never uh, had any issues in there. Fits quite a bit of stuff. Got some gloves, some zip ties, some electrical tape in there. Put random stuff in there and then there's a fairly decent storage here under the where the gas tank the original gas tank would be kind of uh i this area here on the uh, grizzlies gets fairly warm so if you <laughs> if you had something you want to keep cold like maybe a few beer or some pop or water or something you may not want to put it in here but it's great for storing your youtube batteries my youtube batteries my gopro batteries uh keeps them nice and warm and doesn't let them die uh, as far as the other storage that it has, stock anyway, would be this one here in the back. Now, I have some mixed uh, mixed emotions on this. You know, it's fairly big. It's a great spot to keep a uh, tow strap. I got a tow rope in there. It has a drain plug. But if you guys can see, when you close it, can you see this little area all along here? That wasn't always like this. This foam... You see here, I put that in. So when it comes from Yamaha, that's the gap. Like, look at that. That's uh, That's got to be half an inch or more, maybe a little bit more than half an inch. But that's the gap. Like, 
dust and water and everything can just pour into this compartment. I don't know why Yamaha wouldn't put a nice little piece of, uh, this is just some foam that I got uh, from the hardware store. It has double or tape on one side. So it seals it up actually really well. It uh, it impressed me. So if you guys do that, it makes that uh, makes that storage thing a lot nicer. So so as far as options on it go, uh, I mean the uh, the gauge cluster is pretty you know pretty standard. Nothing uh, too fancy. You got a few different options here: clock, reset, select. Uh, so I got uh, twenty four hundred and fifteen. Uh, kilometers on mine and that was my last trip and I have 667 kilometers on my since my last oil change so I just use uh, I just use one of those just keeping track of my oil uh, I mean your basic uh, headlight I mean that's that's easy enough to use I showed you guys the four-wheel drive and stuff with the diff lock uh, I added on the uh, Heat Demon Dual Zone, uh, gives you your hand and thumb warmer. Uh, I, I I can't think of a better better one than that. Heat Demon is great. They've never messed up on me. I had them on my old Grizzly, my 2008, and I had that thing for until 2017, and it never ever messed up on me. So I, I can't say enough. They actually do make like quad zone and tri zone ones so if you wanted to get like a heated seat or something else you can uh, get different ones but you can uh, adjust the heat level I guess I'll turn it on for everybody you can adjust the heat level right now it's uh it's on grips there's thumb uh, it's kind of fuzzy fuggy so and then here's the heat levels here so you can crank it up if you wanted to turn the heat up on your grips, turn it off, and then press select will change it to thumb, and you can crank that up. But yeah, it's it's really nice. Uh, kind of a must-have though if if you're gonna be uh, riding in the winter. So as I was talking uh, before about the 708 motor, uh, I find uh, from stock I found it. Uh, ran a little bit hot so my family was coming on quite a bit and it would stay on for a long period of time so I read enough forms and enough uh, you know comments on the uh, Yamaha Grizzly Facebook group and everyone talks about the EHS tuner so I got the EHS tuner uh, and man oh man did it ever help out with uh, not making the motor run so lean and they make it run the, you know, obviously for the, to pass emissions. But, uh, yeah, well, since I put that, uh, programmer on there, the, the, the fan seems to come on way less. And when it comes on, it doesn't stay on for so long. So another option I did too is there's a little air thing that pumps air, uh, from basically your air box into your exhaust. And it's supposed to help with, uh, it to pass emissions again also. But it also will create, uh, You'll get like a little popping or a backfire sound on deceleration with this. Uh, I blocked that off and it seemed to not stop it totally, but uh, definitely reduce it quite a bit. So other than that, that's really the only uh, modifications I've done to it. Like I installed a worn 2,500 pound winch, which uh, I haven't had to use a ton because trail riding, you don't, uh, I'm not doing a lot of winching. But uh, riding in the snow, you have to winch some people over from time to time. And I installed this as the uh, Yamaha rear storage box. So, all open space, whatever your heart desires to put in there. Uh, I've had a lot of questions on this too. Is it waterproof? Uh, I wouldn't say waterproof if you were definitely to drive in and water was to go over it. I think some water would get in, but I wash it with the pressure washer or the hose, driven it in lots of rain and no water ever gets in. Every once in a while I'll get like a little drip in there, but wouldn't even be enough to cause any issue. So another great thing about the Grizzly is uh it has a skid plate all underneath. It has your A arm guards and uh nice enough for Yamaha. Even since two thousand and eight, my old one used to have this 
is it had curved A arms. So your A arms there have a nice curve in them. You know, my wheel's kind of cockeyed there, but uh, yeah, the uh, the A arms are curved, which makes uh, for more ground clearance when you're trail riding. The suspension on the uh, 2017, I find. Uh, I find the suspension to be quite a bit nicer than my 2008. I don't know. I've never driven them back to back, but uh, it was. Uh, I find this one to be quite a bit smoother. So maybe the suspension's a little bit softer. And you can adjust it. So if you're going to be doubling, which you're not technically supposed to do, you can adjust the. Uh, you can adjust the back shocks and stuff. Uh, crank them up. So yeah, Yamaha's four-wheel drive system uh, is really good. I have no complaints. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, I did have one quick little issue with this switch. And uh, I think that basically comes from assembly. They don't put enough uh, dielectric grease inside. So one day I started it and it was going in and out of four-wheel drive or it was flashing like it was. It didn't sound like it was down, you know, you can hear it kind of go in and out. Uh, so I turned it off, took this switch apart, and I do have a video on that. I'll post it in the uh, description. It's uh, basically take the switch apart, clean up all the connections inside, add some dielectric grease, and ever since then, that was over a year ago, it's never had another issue. So the four wheel drive works great. You know, you got your high low range here, then you got your four wheel drive and your diff lock. So you actually have true diff lock, which is nice. None of that visco lock garbage. Uh, I know or it's not all wheel drive like some other bikes but uh, another little option here I mean I'm sure this comes on most bikes but those little 12 volt uh, thing to plug in if you want to charge your phone or if you had a uh, if you had a pump for your tires so tires tires is tires and oil seem to be the two big topics with the uh, ATVs and pretty much everything but uh, I went with the Maxxis Bighorn 1.0s. I had these on my old uh, my old Grizzly. I absolutely love these tires. They're a perfect trail tire. The 1.0s are very, very rugged. They last forever. I mean, these are 2,600 kilometers. I'll do the conversion for the miles. I'll put it down the corner. But, uh, yeah, they're still, like, new. I drive on all types of different terrain, especially if you guys check out my videos. You'll see that. Uh, I'm uh, not doing a lot of pavement running or anything, but... Uh, Definitely trails and a little bit of mud, there's sand, rocks, everything. They hold up great. Super, super smooth. Uh, there are Bighorn 2.0s. Uh, the 2.0s, the only benefit they would have is that they are lighter. From my experiences and talking with the people I know, uh, the 2.0s... There's a reason why you can get them super easily at your dealer, and the 1.0s are a little bit harder to get. Uh, the 2.0s don't last as long. They're not as puncture resistant. The only real benefit they have is that they're actually lighter than the 1.0s, the ones I have. But uh, if I uh, if I was telling you to buy a set of tires and you wanted big horns, I would definitely tell you to get the 1.0s. So again, with the suspension being super smooth, uh, definitely better than the 2008 year, but uh, I'm sure they've changed over the years. Uh, I went ahead and removed my rear sway bar. Uh, I did a lot of research on it before I removed it because I don't like really messing with stock machines. But uh, the rear sway bar removal, I did a video too uh, comparing my Grizzly with the sway bar against a different Grizzly with it removed and he had alcohol shocks. I'll put that uh, video down in the description also. And we did a few tests where you're trying to get the tire to lift off the ground. Uh, you know by going at different angles and going over different obstacles and with no sway bar it definitely without a doubt kept more uh more rubber on the trail so i went ahead and removed that when i put on my uh my uh, tuner and did my as delete so i don't regret it i don't notice it at all uh if i'm traveling at high speeds i think it's really only on there just uh for maybe novice riders uh if they're traveling at high speeds it doesn't let the, the bike lean over as much, less chance of tipping over. But if you're an experienced rider or even just a moderately experienced, you'll have no issues removing it. And you know, I'm sure you'll like it, especially for the trails. So I'm just here at the uh, left side foot, uh, foot well. And uh, I thought I'd show this too. This might just be a fluke thing. I've never seen this happen before, but I was riding in the trails. And I ran over a, you know, a decent sized stick. It was maybe two and a half, three inches. Uh, 
thick anyways and probably 15 inches long. I ran over with the front and the, just the way I ran over it, it came up and uh, kind of punched a hole right through my, you guys see that? Right through the floorboard here. That's another small issue I had with this. I think it was just a super fluke thing. <laughs> I've never seen it ever happen before, but uh, definitely wanted to be uh, transparent with you guys with any other issues I've ever had with this thing. So other than that, my four wheel drive switch, which I told you guys is a super easy fix. Uh, that's the only issues I've had with this thing so far. Has uh, 20, over 2,000 kilometers. It has the original brakes. Obviously the clutching and everything's good. The belt's good. I have uh, I've done the oil change on it and uh, I did a video on that too. So I'll post that down in the description. But yeah, the thing really hasn't given me any issues. I think it's a very, very good quality bike and uh, it's it's hard to beat for the money. And if you're gonna be doing trail riding, it does absolutely everything you need. So yeah, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's my video. That's my review on the uh, Yamaha Grizzly. Like I said, it's a 26, 2017 model. Uh, I don't have, uh, very many things negative to say about it it's it is what it is it hasn't changed in a long time and i don't think they want to mess with a good thing i think that's really why they don't ever change it uh, they just do little tweaky things to it uh, it's a great great trail bike it's a great work bike it has a trailer hitch on it too if you just want to put a hitch on it and work around your farm or your yard so i don't uh i don't think i have anything else more to say about it so uh if you guys like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I love love hearing your guys' comments. If you guys have any questions at all, I'm not uh, I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm some ATV guru. I'm just just a regular guy. So uh, if you guys have any questions, shoot them in there. If I don't know it, uh, I usually if I don't know the question, I usually text my buddy Evan. He's got uh, he's been riding uh, he's filmed pretty much every four wheeler that's ever been made. I think. But uh, I usually shoot him a text and then I'll get the answer from him. But uh, yeah, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment, and I hope you guys liked it. Hit the bell notification if you guys want to get notified for my future videos. Definitely check out some of my other videos if this is the first one you've seen. Uh, it's all pretty much ATV trail riding videos. Uh, I usually like going camping, stopping, having a fire, cooking up a little, little meal in the woods. Usually got my uh, my dog Wendell with me, so uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate the support from everybody. We're just about at five thousand subscribers, so that that's great. Never would have thought in a million years that would happen. Uh, hope you guys are all staying safe, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. Take her easy. Cheers.